感觉说完之后，呃，这个呃，比那个普普通的那工业啤酒强多了，啊，之后就是离不开了。<笑>然后我就过来，就说：“嘿，嗯，我真的想开一个咖啡店在这里，但我需要你的帮助，你知道吗？”然后，作为咖啡店的老板，有时候你不只是卖咖啡，你还要提供咖啡服务也可以说，就是我平时的这些工业拉格粥比较想上厕所，然后喝完这个就是比较好的酒呢，越喝越想喝，嗯，然后后来一年的时间吧，我喝了五六百种酒，觉得还不错，就开始酿自己的酒，喝一些一些就是手做的酒。You have this inner circle of craft brewer who's convinced about this topic, who's passionate about that topic. They live craft beer. Uh, it was a totally new taste experience. Craft beer a couple of years ago was only 0.3 percent, and now we're just like about 5 percent. And um, yes, you are totally right. The Chinese beer market is the biggest, but not because the Chinese um, beer culture is the richest and the oldest. No, it's because the the population is the biggest. Uh, actually, the beer culture is on um, pre, uh, pretty much on the beginning starting level. Thank you. 
would guess it's, do we have an extra solenoid valve? Of itself, it's a German term called Vorlauf. Which is what we call bright beer tanks. So this is just kind of, it's gonna have a much longer kind of longevity and shelf life. They're steam jackets, so we can do different temperature profiles. The wort will basically channel through that plate, and then we're getting all that sweet liquid, what we call wort, W-O-R-T. So we want to collect that wort, remove it from the grain. I think kind of the she phenomenon kind of really opened people's eyes to IPA and brought a lot of curiosity around that specific style of beer. And I think within that, there's a lot of different ranges of IPA that consumers can try. Some of it leaning towards like Chinese ingredients, um, whether it's osmanthus or jasmine or just going different routes with like local ingredients.